Welcome to St. John's Episcopal Church. I'm Father David Kluderman, the priest in charge. And today is the fifth Sunday of Easter, and we welcome you, near and far, friend and family. You are all welcome, and we welcome the chance to be able to worship with you, even through electronic means. <laughs> Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. A song of Ezekiel. I will take you from among all nations and gather you from all lands to bring you home. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and purify you from false gods and uncleanliness. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit put within you. I will take the stone from your chest and give you a heart of flesh. I will help you walk in my laws and cherish my commandments and do them. You shall be my people and I will be your God. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. 
when they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me into your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock and a castle to keep me safe. For you are my prey and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness, save me. so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, 
and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. first reading today is the story of Stephen, who was martyred for having proclaimed his vision of seeing God. And he saw God because of the relationship that he had found in Jesus. And through that relationship, he had found a peace with himself, with his life, and even with its end. We can't help but notice the parallels between his death and the death of Jesus. That as he stood before the crowd who was stoning him, he was able somehow to look upon them with mercy and ask God to forgive them. And then he knelt in the midst of the stoning and simply gave up his spirit and died. Sounds reminiscent of the death of Jesus himself. What that says to us is how much Jesus had become a part of the life of Stephen. How much the life of Jesus had been woven into the very life of Stephen. And in being woven together, how Stephen was then able to enter into this moment of facing the world and of finding the grace to speak the words of Jesus and to live and die in the full expectation that as he knew that Jesus had risen from the dead, he could say these words, he could live this moment of life and death out knowing that even as he shared the words of Jesus now, he would be sharing in the life of Jesus in the resurrection. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus would tell his followers that. When Thomas said, we don't know the way, how are we supposed to find the way? How are we supposed to know where to go? As if Thomas and the others were looking for a map they could read. And Jesus would simply say, you have me as your map. You have the relationship that I am offering to you now. And through that relationship, you have the life that I am living. And it is yours. Live that life. Live in me, and I will live in you, and you will find the way. Those words were to bring comfort to the first followers of Jesus, and hopefully they bring us comfort in this time that we're living in. 
Because the truth is that there is a lot of anxiety. There is a lot of restlessness in the world in which we live in today. Brought upon by a virus, and through that virus, brought upon by the sense of losing those things that, that we have known to be part of our lives, the, the guideposts, the stepping stones that we have always counted on to bring us through life, to bring us through each day. The very fact that, that you are watching this service is a reminder that we're not meeting on Sunday mornings in a church building. That the sacrament of the Eucharist that so many of us have grown up with and have counted upon as being that cornerstone of our, of our spiritual life and of the spiritual journey that we're on is not available to us right now. And in some ways, our lives and our actions and our very words might very well reflect those of Thomas. Lord, we do not know the way. Because it's easy, after many years, to allow those things that we do, important things, like coming to church on Sundays, like coffee hour, like being able to go out and, and go to the stores or meet with people in the coffee shops. We take those things for granted, but not only that, they become a part of the journey that we're on. They become part of what we count on to be there because they, they allow us to enter into fellowship and, and nurture the relationships that we, that we love and honor. And not being able to keep them at the present moment can bring anxiety, can bring a sense of loneliness and pain. And what we need in this moment is to remind ourselves that those were signs of something deeper. Those are signs of a, of a deeper relationship that we have with God and through God with each other. And those vehicles for, for expressing and living out our relationship with God may not be immediately available. But it doesn't mean that the underlying relationships with God and with each other have to be threatened. you are watching this service is a recognition of that longing and that hunger you have to hear the Word of God, to listen to the music that reflects the glory of God in our world, to pray with one another virtually. We have others who, who join in a coffee hour online as they are able. That reflects the same sense of longing to maintain and nurture relationships, even in this moment. We are creating new ways or going back to old ways to make sure that even though the signs of our relationships may somehow be threatened, the relationships themselves are not. When all this began, one of the things I did was to invite my three grandchildren who are just beginning to write or are writing to begin 
writing letters back and forth to me. I'm not sure that they'd written letters before. So this is a new experience for them. And it's a renewed experience for me. But in a time when I can't see them, when I can't be with them, it represents an important step in both of our lives, in all of our lives, to commit ourselves to doing things that maintain and nurture our relationships with each other. So in the face of what we encounter today, we are challenged to ask ourselves, how? How are we going to nurture our relationship with God through Christ when the normal vehicles for that may not be available to us? We are not cut off from God. We are not cut off from each other. But it does require some creativity and imagination. And the realization that the path for one person may not be the same path for another. And in all humility, all of us are searching. All of us are wondering. All of us are yearning to strengthen our relationship with God because quite honestly, in our heart of hearts, we know that that's the only thing that we can trust in fully and the only thing that will guide us through this time. I am the way and the truth and the life. Never were the words more important than they are today. Amen. In the faith given to us, let us proclaim our faith and say, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that he is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. call upon God to hear our prayers and to grant us those things that are in accord with the divine will, responding, Hear us, O risen Christ. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Matthew, our diocesan bishop, and Father David, our priest, for all the holy people of God, including those of St. Thomas Manasseh, 
and hospitals and clinics in the Diocese of Moshbingo. Hear us, O risen Christ, <clears throat> that we may do the works that Jesus revealed in his ministry, the healing of the sick, the giving of sight to the blind, and the blessing of the poor and the devastated. Let us pray today for Penny, Barb, Jeanette, Dan, Jackie, Steve, Alice, Crystal, Aaliyah, Joan, John, Jim, Bob, Bill, Jane, and Cody. Hear us, O risen Christ. God of love, you call us to be in relationship with you and each other. We are children, grandchildren, brothers and sisters, parents and grandparents. Today, we honor those called to be mothers. Grant them wisdom and devotion in the ordering of life, that they may be a strength in time of need, a counselor in perplexity, a comfort in sorrow, and a companion in joy. Knit their will with yours and their spirit in your spirit, that they may bring love and peace into their families and the world. Hear us, O risen Christ. In thanksgiving for the beauty that Mother Earth has set before our eyes, and for the mysteries yet unseen, that we may honor the expansiveness of creation and be guardians of its splendor. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ, that the Lord may comfort those in the waning days of life and bring to life eternal those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O risen Christ. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for the gift of your grace and presence throughout this time and in these services which bring us together. Hear our prayers for the parish family, members and friends alike. Grant us all things necessary for our common life and bring us all to be one in heart and mind within your church, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We pray in union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the whole Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. Since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you, and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon us this day and remain with us always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. <laughs>